Hi guys, it's me. And today, of course, is the 28th of the month of June. And it is soon June will be over. And, of course, we will be going into um, other times of the year. I'm going to like where I want it here. Um, yeah, I suppose this is going to get. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about a couple different things. And uh, the first is to remind you that the contest to meet up with me is on. And here's what you need to do. You have to get your entry in by July 4th at midnight Eastern time. Now, that's the requirement. So you've got a few days left. Uh, in short, here's the requirement. Number one, you can ask me your sample question. Okay. The sample question is to uh, give me an idea of just what kind of materials you want to discuss. Um, each entrant, okay, will, their sample question will be reviewed. And if I can, I will answer them on or in a reply to your video uh, or into your question. And... Um, the person obviously has to leave the first name and a phone number that I can reach you at. On the 5th of July, me and Lumi will go through and look at the entrance. And based on um, your questions, we will select one person. At this point, this contest is only open to American people in the continental U.S. However, in the future, we may also uh, consider um, expanding to international contest calls right now. Obviously, you have two choices. If you're in the local area of Winstead, we could actually meet in person and do a video in person. Or, uh, if you're not local, we can do a telephone interview. And uh, those are the two ways we can interview each other. Uh, this will be the first time that I ever did a telephone interview with anybody. So there might be some mites to nail down as we go through the work. So basically, as I said, you need to be able to speak American or British English. You need to be an American citizen. You need to send me a sample question. And you need to send me your first name. You do not need to send me your last name. And a telephone number, if you're in the United States, with a full number with the area code, please. And um, if you don't have a working um, voicemail system, um, hopefully um, you will be around when I call you. If you are not around or if, if you don't tell me when you're there and I try to call you, there's no answer, I will try two more times. If I can't get through, then I'll select the next contestant on the list. Um, sorry guys, it's the way it has to go sometimes. Um, as I said, it's open to anybody. Now, today we're going to talk about, um, other things as well. Of course, it's been hot. It's been warm. It's tepid. Um, it's certainly tepid today. It's, uh, was well, about 27, 28 degrees. Certainly not overall that bad. It's just that Mother... Asna, who is acting as a summer stewardess, has decided to slowly, gradually turn up the thermostat to warmer settings um, as she's been, um, you know, appreciated the fact that I maintain the colder temperatures as my temporary stint as the uh, spring stewardess. Uh, of course, my main season is winter, and, uh, and so winter is really what I like to focus on. Uh, so, what I said it in the weather uh, about being practice weather safety for summer certainly applies. Is it will be getting up to about 31 degrees uh, in the next few days. Now, of course, on Thursday I'm going to be getting my hair redone as well, um, so I will look better. And um, what, else? what are you going to talk about? Um, karma and dogma. Yes, we are. Um, that is the main topic for today is karma and, and briefly we're going to talk about dogma um only because it's a good topic um because we've seen plenty of that uh, locally about karma here in winstead so let's start basically what is karma 
Well, the concept of karma is actually an old um, Eastern concept from discussing the, uh, from India, um, was talked about in the Vedas, the divine Vedas, but it's also referred to in the Egyptian mythology as well. Basically is every person has a, uh, a heart and the heart is, um, either is full of good or full of bad. Um, bad people, for example, do wrong and do bad things to good people or even all the bad people. Well, according to the concept, the concept of, com well, I'm going to try to bring this into the 21st century. So if I screw this up, please bear with me, okay? Um, according to the way nature works, it cannot always be bad. There has to be a... a a balancing of the books, if you will. Um, so people, for example, who have good karma, okay, are lighter than people with bad karma, bringing it and tying it into the Egyptian concept. Um, and so when they put your heart on the scale, if it is supposedly lighter than, I think, a feather or some other type of very light object. Um, you are said to go to heaven and you are complete. And then if your heart is heavier than a feather, then I think it's this dog star series gets to chew you up and your heart up and you're doomed forever to eternity. That sounds like something like hell in the case of the Satan and the devil. I'm going to just, just briefly say that that's one interpretation of the results of good and bad karma. Now, the 21st century version of karma comes from an expression called what goes around comes around, also from the golden rule. Do unto others as you would like to have been done unto you. What Jesus in particular in this case was talking about was is that you probably want to be treated well and so you're expected to treat others well, and based on that, you will be re the favor will be returned to you, which is kind of related to the role of ready in addition, which also discusses karma, which is three times you give, three times you shall receive. In other words, um, actually, what you give, you shall receive thrice, um, meaning that if you do good, three times the good, um, either three to individual good deeds or a um, uh, maybe three times the um, bounty will be returned to you. For example, if you give, for example, a poor man a meal, somebody may decide to help you in the future and give you three meals. Doesn't mean that they're going to feed you all at one time three meals, but it means that the, you're, you're, you will be uh, rewarded for your, your, your good deeds. Also, this is the reason why we don't do curses, is that the same rule applies if you do wrong to somebody, that you will be uh, treated three times bad for all the bad you do. So if you, for example, wish somebody to die, you will suffer possibly three times the severity or three times the number of deaths in your life. Um, so for that reason, we try not to do evil because evil means that we're going to get our just desserts, as the expression says. Now, in some cultures, we try to enforce good karma through dogma. Dogma is a rigid systems of things such as religion and sometimes it's the rigidity of this structure um kind of pushes some people who are um not quite a conforming group to choose to um um rebel against the rigidity of structures of dogma um that's why this tagline comes from Sorry, my karma ran over your dogma. Um, means that my karma, my heart, is more important um, than and bigger than dogma or some stringent, uh, strict, regimented rules of uh, guidance as it was set down, possibly say from from the Quran or the Divine Vedas or even uh, the Holy Bible or even the Pentateuch or the Torah. It all basically comes down to that. 
um, concept. Now, so what do you do to keep your heart as light as a feather? Keeping it with the Egyptian concept. Well, you do good. And sometimes that's hard because in this day and age, we see like, oh, the bad guys are getting away with all this trouble and all the good guys are suffering strongly and painfully. Those are Jesus said in the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are pure and hopeful, they will be the sons and daughters of God. There is no reason to do evil or to do immoral or depravity um, things, depraved things to anybody or to yourself because in the end, your fruits is what they will notice. They will notice who you are and how you carry yourself and how you um, present yourself is going to make a big difference. Easy, right? Oh, no, not always because like this, like in media doesn't help. I mean, you watch television, you see all these well-to-do actors and actresses and driving around with flashy cars and they're going out with these beautiful women and or men or, and they're, um, uh, they're just basically, they're living in sin and they're doing things that are just depra you know, so much depravity and yet we embrace that and um but we must be careful because it's our of our eyes is how you know it's how we in this case um foresee the world around us our eyes can be contaminated by um bad thoughts and bad feelings and bad scenes and that's why Jesus said, if one has sees, you know, has a bad eye, it's best for him to pluck it out. It's better to go in one eye into the um, into heaven versus with two eyes into the fires of hell. Um, that's what he meant by that. Um, it's better to try to live your best life you can. But sometimes people do not do well. It's easy. So this is where um, we have to understand that there is a um, a way to purify the soul and it's not necessarily limited to just going to confession if you're Catholic um, but that certainly is a wonderful tool and I believe in it so if because I was raised as a Catholic so I certainly going to believe in confession but even if you don't the other tool you have is to just talk to mother and father god and say help me i'm really kind of lost here i'm not sure what to do i want to fix my karma i want to i want to live in peace in the universe because people with bad karma don't live in peace in the universe they're always making more with it and sometimes after a while they don't even know why they're doing it they just do it so like i said the point is is that um karma is a a very important system of checks and balances that keeps um, us to try to live a wholesome life. But, you know, sometimes, like I said, people screw up and uh, they do bad things to other people. Don't forget another powerful tool of, of fixing bad karma is to say with sincerity, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did that. I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt you. I wasn't thinking um, that's fine if you truly believe that it's true then the books will be put back in order by mother and father God through your um, guardian angel and of course your spirit guide and you will be brought back into alignment with the universe well anyway so that's basically it for this short video but again um, please don't forget to like or dislike. Maybe you don't like the video, but if you don't, why? Tell me. And don't forget to share it with your friends. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe so you can be kept up to date with all new video topics. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody.